change the way that you think about success and failure so that you get more success. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Damon from NLP Gym bringing you cutting edge neuro linguistic programming tools and techniques to help you create the life that you desire. So if that sounds good, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. Success and failure aren't things. They're processes, they're, they're actions. But we tend to think of them as things, even the words success and failure, those are nouns. But these are not really things. Think about it. You can't go and pick up a handful of success, put it in your pocket and go take it somewhere and then pull it out. That's an actual object, a real thing you can do that with. But success and failure is not like that. But when we think about it that way, success or failure, either one, Rather, it, rather than thinking of it as succeeding or failing, so think about it in your mind. How, does, how, does, how do you feel about the words? What do you think of when I say success? What do you think of when I say failure? Now, think about the word succeeding. And notice the difference even in your body and the way that you think about it when you hear the word success or you think about the word success and then you think about the word succeeding. How are they different? How do they feel different? What goes on in your mind that's different? And do the same thing with failure. So think failure and failing. Most often, not everybody's the same, but most people most often have a sense that the word success or the word failure feels like a static thing, like it's unmovable, it's just there. When a word that is actually a verb or a process is turned into a noun, we call that a nominalization. So we want to denominalize the word. So when I say succeeding or failing, how is that different? Well, for most people, that feels like more like these are processes or things in motion. And if something is in motion or moving in a certain direction, then you can move move it in a different direction. You can steer it. You can turn it. It's movable. It has mobility rather than being static. This is why words are so important. If you're thinking about a failure that you had, you probably feel stuck. Like it's immovable. It's just, it is what it is. But if you think about it as failing, as in you were failing at that time, that presupposes that that was then, that was in the past. It was a happening that occurred in the past, but it is no longer happening. The words you use are so important, how they make you feel and think about things. They could literally be the difference between succeeding and failing. Now that you're thinking of success and failure as processes rather than objects or things or static states of being, now, understand that they're not processes in the sense that they're not two separate processes. They're one process. Succeeding and failing is one process. They're two parts of one process, not two different processes. This also holds people back a lot of times because they think of them as, well, I'm either succeeding or I'm, either, or I'm failing. It's much more difficult to manage these two if you're thinking of them as they're going in two different directions or worse, they're pulling you apart. Like these are two processes that are happening inside of you and sometimes you're succeeding and sometimes you're failing and you're stuck in the middle. It's a conflict. There's friction. You're being pulled. You're being pushed. This isn't helping you at all. So think of it as one process. A person who succeeds a lot probably fails more than most people. You've heard this before. The person who hits the most home runs is usually the person who strikes out the most. This is true in so many areas of life. When I was a kid, my, other, my two brothers used to say, Damon, you always get what you want. Mom and dad always give you what you want. Certainly not true. The difference was I asked. I, I tried more. I tried to get what I wanted more and I asked more and I'm sure I got turned down 
more times than they got turned down. But because I was asking more times, I also often got what I wanted. And that is so true in life in general. Ask for life, ask from life what it is that you want. And sometimes you're gonna get it and sometimes you won't get it, but you'll never get it if you're not asking. So put these two together, think of them as one process that is moving together. Sometimes you're going, you're, sometimes you get off track and you go where you don't wanna go. We can call that failing. And then when that happens, you, you recorrect, you steer this back in the direction where you want to go, which is towards success. This will make this so much smoother and so much easier. When you see that failure is just part of the process of succeeding, then failure doesn't become so discouraging. Failure doesn't make you want to quit. Failure, in fact, makes you realize, okay, I just went in the wrong direction and I'm that much closer to succeeding, that it's just a matter of getting back on track. I veered off but I can come back because it, again, it's a process. It's not like a static state of being. It's not a process that pulled you away from success. It's a process that is necessary for success. And last but not least, what vision is your succeeding and failing serving? Now this is kind of a radical idea, but this is gold and this will change your life. The vision is the meaning that you're making of it. The vision is what overall you want. What are the values that you want to fulfill? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What do you see? What is that the ultimate ultimate? <laughs> what, is the, what is it you want your life to be? What is it the life you want to create? And when you get very clear about that and you realize that this is what's motivating everything that you do and then you connect that with the process of succeeding and failing. And you give that meaning to your successes and your failures. This is when your life really starts to change because failure then is not something that you are or a failure is not something you are and you don't get discouraged by failing anymore. And success is not empty. Sometimes success, when you achieve it, will feel very empty. The reason why is it's not attached to a greater meaning. So when you attach this greater meaning to both succeeding and failing, this is the game changer. This will make your life different. You will see the world in a different way. Think about it like this. Every time you fail at something, instead of taking that failure and making that failure mean that you're a failure, that you're not good, you're not worthy, you're not deserving. Instead of doing all that, what if you turn that around and the meaning you make of failure is progress. The meaning you make of failure is you're getting closer to success. You're getting closer to your vision. What do you think would happen if you start thinking that way as you pursue not just success, with the vision beyond the success, the thing that the success is serving. Imagine applying that meaning to your successes and to your failures. What this does is it aligns your pursuit with that greater vision. And overall, this creates a greater meaning, a greater sense of purpose. You're going to make meaning of life. You're going to make meaning of your successes. You're going to make meaning of your failures. This is inevitable. We are meaning making machines. That is just what human beings do. So would you rather leave this up to chance uh, as to what meanings you make and let this, let your unconscious sort it, sort it out? Or do you want to be conscious and purposeful about, crea about creating the meanings and loading into success and failure the meanings that are only going to make you more successful and lead you to that vision. I think you know what the, the, the best answer is. You have an opportunity to create a vision, to pursue it, and to see your successes and your failures as getting you to that vision, which gives a sense of purpose and meaning to not just your successes, but also your failures. 
Check out my website, nlp-gym.com. There you will find some free NLP training and some free hypnotic inductions. You can access these immediately by just downloading them to your phone, your laptop, or your tablet. Check out NLP Gym on Facebook. There you'll get real-time updates on whatever it is I'm up to. If I'm releasing a new training, doing a talk in your area, or teaching a workshop, you will find it on the NLP Gym Facebook page. I also have a private NLP Gym Facebook group. Check that one out as well. If you like this video, please click like right down here. And of course, if you have not subscribed already, please do so now by clicking the subscribe button right down here. Take care.